I don't want to rustle any feathers here. I don't feel like content creation is going to be, you know, as big as it is right now. Anyone can call themselves a content creator. Anyone can just walk off the street without any experience. Just come in here and go, yeah, I'm a content creator. That I hate. It's getting to the point now where it is scary. If someone gave them a million dollars today, they wouldn't have a camera in their hand tomorrow. The difference between art and content creation is in, in my mind, like huge. What is your viewpoint on the impact of social media? Just the constant thought of needing to post all the time and what's trending and it just set my mind into flames. Are people going to look at me when I say I'm setting up a production company? Are they going to look at me funny? Imposter syndrome then sunk in and I was like, am I ready for this? For me personally, it was just really bad for my mental health. <laughs> God. <laughs> Cut that. Welcome to another episode of The Mood Podcast. I'm Matt Jacob. In this episode, I welcome back my friend Harry Pope. Harry is a very talented freelance filmmaker and videographer based here in Bali, who took a departure from photography last year and is now immersed full-time in the art of video and filmmaking. He works a lot with big brands around the world, and so it was incumbent upon us to talk a lot about his conflicts between passion purpose and commercial pressures. We also talked about his opinions on social media, content creators, and business techniques when pitching for jobs. It's always a pleasure to sit across from Harry and glad we could do it again, this time in a more appropriate and formal setting. So now I bring you Harry Pope, part two. Harry Pope, welcome back to the Mood Podcast. Yeah. I say welcome back. Welcome we had back. you on here like a year ago, yeah. I think. Um, it was kind of a shit podcast. Not because of you. Because of me. It was um, all my fault. Mainly because of my wife and assistant who wasn't <laughs> present. And therefore, we had loads of technical issues. But um, so it's great to have you back. We've been meaning to do this for a while. And we're finally in the same place together for the same period of time. Exactly. Um, and you're not traveling and travel has been certainly something of a, a constant in your life for the last year. T tell me what's been going on, what the last year has, has kind of looked like for you. Yeah, the last year has been busy and, you know, very fortunate that it's been busy. We've been working hard, working with some cool companies, creating cool videos, working with cool people. Um, but yeah, traveling a lot, traveling to... Uh, Vietnam last June, uh, I was in India late last year, uh, Greenland, I did Greenland twice in a year. I didn't even think about that. I did yeah, Greenland twice in one year and Greenland is a pretty intense place to travel to. You know, uh, we went in the winter and it was absolutely freezing, <laughs> like minus, minus 15, minus 20. And then we went in the summer, which was the season of mosquitoes. So then you're just like swarmed by mosquitoes. If you do really? want to, yeah, it's crazy. It's like crazy, crazy. Jed, uh, we we had these like netting things over our faces. Nets. And net, yeah, nets, netting things, <laughs> nets uh, over our faces. And uh, they weren't like hats with nets. They were just literally like a, a net, like you just put a bag over your head. And they obviously had little holes in them. And we were on a hike and they were going through the net onto our foreheads. I didn't oh, get... I saw Jadina's yeah, face. I didn't get bitten as much. Um, but yeah, I, I was kind of, my, my partner was basically saying, oh, I'll keep getting bitten. And I was like, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Like, let's just get on with the hike. I wasn't getting bitten that much. That's why I was saying it's fine. She was like, no, it's really bothering me. And we finished the hike. She took off her net and I realized why she had been, uh, why she had been saying it's really bothering her because her whole forehead was swollen. And, uh, yeah, we were just, you know, we were bitten alive. Uh, if you do want to travel to Greenland, it is an incredible place. I would never say you know, don't go there, but there are things that make it a very like difficult place to travel to. And, um, but the scenery and the wildlife, you know, they outweigh all the bad things that, that are there, all the things that are going to, you know, all the cold and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I would still say travel there, but coming back to my point, travel has been uh, a big thing over the last year and I'm finding it nice now just to have some time off. I say time off of travel, not time off of work, but just, yeah have some time to get back into a routine, the things I really miss, playing paddle with you and Fee and and Jed and going to the gym and going for coffees in the morning, just the little things that you can't do when you're just on the road, busy, you know. Where do you go for coffees? 
Uh, I usually go to this place called Yore. It's not that nice, though. I'm trying to find <laughs> somewhere else. You need, to, you need to build a little pop-up closer to home, mate. I know. Yeah. Well, you say close to home, but for people who don't know Bali, it is, it's like less than 10 minutes yeah. for us. Yeah. Because we, we live in, you know, just around the corner yeah. from each other. So actually, for us on a bike, it's like, oh, God, yeah, 10 minutes is, oh, I can't be bothered. Yeah. But for anyone else in a car, it's, you know, yeah. or in the, in the Western world, it's not exactly a, a long way. Exactly. So it's funny uh, perceptions. But how's life in Bali treating you in terms of work and, you know, for, for someone who's, you know, you're full, full video now, right? So you're, you know, you're doing some incredible, I love all your short films, incredible filmmaking stuff, which I see you wanting to get out there and do more of. Yeah. But maybe kind of that that creative outlet is a little bit limited for you just because of, of client work, right? Yeah, for and sure. that's kind of the way the landscape is at the moment. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like I always have to obviously go with the the client job first. Um, you know, the dream would always obviously be to create what I want to create and, and do videos about certain topics that I'm interested in. Um, but yeah, the, you know, you always have to fall under what the client wants and sometimes you might have to shoot a hotel and, and make a hotel video and, you know, I don't want to be a hotel filmmaker, you know, for the rest of my life, but it's, you know, money, need money on the table, really. So, uh, yeah, so the last year has been mainly focusing on client work, I would say. And like I was just saying, in, in the hotel travel space, um, but in Bali, more so working for YouTubers and editing videos. Um, George Hammond, uh, I work with him every, every month, uh, and he has a YouTube page now, a YouTube page, YouTube channel, and, uh, we do weekly videos. So we're out recording pretty much every week for his YouTube channel. Um, again, I don't want to be a, a YouTube editor for the rest of my life, but, <laughs> uh, he's a good friend and he wanted to do this for a long time. So I said, I'd help him out with it and it seems to be going well. So, uh, yeah, right now that's where I'm at, but then. I know that I'm going to have to travel. I've got to travel in three weeks for a job. So, yeah, uh, but I'm looking forward to that one. I don't mind it when it's going to uh, somewhere that I really like. So I'm going to Australia in three weeks and oh. I'm, yeah, I know, I don't know. Good check. It's a, it's a cool place to be. Um, so I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to that. It's also with a company that I've been trying to work with for a long time. Um, but yeah, I'm always thinking like, where's the next big place that I'm going to have to travel for, for work and, do I actually want to do it or am I quite happy just being here or, or, you know, um, something about, I mean, what are you 27 now? Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, I guess still evolving as a person as much as a filmmaker. So, you know, it's interesting to hear and we, I don't think we've had, I and mean, we're good friends. I haven't really had this conversation or I haven't heard you talk about travel in that way mm. before. And I always felt that you were, you know, travel came, f not came first, but mm. it was in conjunction with, your, your job and you always were kind of more than happy to do that so it's interesting here like having a i mean having a routine certainly for an older guy like myself having a routine is fucking everything you know it's the almost the the core of happiness yeah. right yeah. it's like having routine having home life building a nice home for you where you just feel comfortable and happy um that being said like i i do understand still the desire for people and creators to mm -hmm. really just want to travel all the time just don't know how they do it no. like even when i was your age i was kind of wanting to sell that bag you know every, everyone's different what um what does that look like moving forward then because nearly all of your jobs you have to travel because you don't have any jobs in bali or you, you can't do any jobs in bali right so you know is that something you have to gonna have to change in the future in terms of living situation yeah i, I think so yeah i just like from the last, I would say over the last six months, I've really analyzed the kind of people that live in Bali, what they do, what they're working on. Um, and I think that I came to like a consensus that it isn't the place I can be long term for what I want to achieve. Um, I want to work in bigger productions. Uh, you know, it, obviously I'm dreaming really big here, but, you know, TV, film, those are the things I'm really, really interested in. And I just can't see myself working from Bali in in that type of scenario. Uh, so I feel like eventually I'm going to have to say, you know, what's better for my business? Is it living out here and, and being with my friends and, you know, enjoying my life? Or am I going to be able to do that in other places as well as, you know, finding work? These are like the constant thoughts that are bouncing 
back and forth in my head. Um, but right now, like me and my partner had a had a conversation about it because she was thinking maybe we should move back to Europe soon. And to be honest, like all of my friends are here. I still have friends at home, but you know, we don't we don't speak that often. I would say my really close friends are all out here and I couldn't imagine being in the rest of my 20s slash like coming into my early 30s at some point not having them around me and not being able to just to text one of them and say can we go for a coffee here and can we go and play paddle here and, and such so I can't see it happening just yet but I do feel like there is a time when I'm gonna have to just you know say enough's enough and I don't feel like I can I feel like there's gonna be a brick wall and I'm gonna hit it at some point out here and you know whether that comes in the next year two years three years i really don't know um we've got our villa for another year in bali we're probably gonna then move and find another place and uh i've got roommates who i love very much but you know my girlfriend's gonna be turning 30 she said she doesn't want roommates going into her 30s oh, you put that on her no no, no that's <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, got thrown under the bus i love i love my roomies and we've had a great year and we're gonna have a great year ahead but you know there is time where we just want some space to ourselves so uh so yeah i think after after that time we'll find our own place and then yeah i just i think i need to really think about what i want to achieve i'm always always thinking ahead always thinking a year ahead maybe i should be thinking a year ahead in terms of other things other than work this is something that jed tells me a, a lot like i need to actually think about my life rather than just work 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 but i always think about work first and what's what's around the corner and uh, yeah maybe i just don't see it being long term out here i just see a lot of content creators out here which i i don't think i am a content creator you know going back to posting on uh, instagram that we were speaking about earlier like i don't i don't really post on instagram anymore most of my work is creating for a company creating videos assets for a business to be able to use for marketing and and for their social media so yeah i don't see myself in that niche and i feel like Bali is just growing and growing with content creators. And if you are a content creator, get yourself to Bali. You know, it is the perfect place for it. Actually, don't get Cut yourself to Bali. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a it's an amazing place for content creators. You've got literally everything you need. You've got we've beaches. Got enough people here. There is enough people here. So if you've booked a flight, cancel it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you over the last two years, I've I've met so many people in the industry. Uh, everyone comes here everyone gets along everyone shares new ideas i've i've literally met some amazing amazing lifelong friends out here so i can't slay it too much but i just yeah i know there's going to be a point in time where i'm like i need to i need to make my way to somewhere that's going to be able to get me to my next step do you find yourself almost creatively stuck in a corner because you bali is you know i know a lot of I don't know how to label what you do, I guess, cinematic filmmaking. You know, if if you were to go and do whatever you wanted to do, it'd be something like that, right? Go make for sure some beautifully cinematic films yeah. about whatever you want to make. I feel like there are the 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 filmmakers that either live here or come here, they do something that's cultural because, you know, Bali's obviously rich in in culture. Whereas that doesn't seem to be I know you do you do have interest in many other cultures and shooting many other cultures around the world. But Bali doesn't seem to be that for you, which is uh, obviously there's nothing wrong with that. So therefore, do you feel like, well, if I'm not going to do that in Bali and then there's not kind of the genres that I want to kind of dig into in terms of car makers or mm. something you really, yeah. I know you want to, you know, work with more uh, vehicle manufacturers, yeah. bikes and cars yeah. and do some kind of epic shooting. With yeah. Them. yeah. If that's not here and you're not going to, you don't really want to shoot what Bali has to offer, then you, you kind of stuck right you either have to get those jobs and therefore now travel. you're in the travel fucking shit yeah yeah or you don't right yeah. and you f you find something else is that you kind of feel trapped in that respect yeah right? definitely i think that i am in that kind of where that scenario where i i will have just travel for work like you just said like i'm just gonna have to suck it up and travel and you know go and go and search for the jobs that i really want to do but yeah i've i've been shooting in bali I've, i first came to bali five years ago and you know loved the culture started shooting a lot of photography back then shooting the people and you know the the amazing landscapes that we've got out here and then started to venture into other countries and shoot their cultures um but yeah i've just been doing it for such a long time and i just felt there was like a again i just didn't feel like I, there was a place that i could go and, and do this kind of work and and 
I, I really don't know that, like what made me not want to do it anymore but I just felt like I'd done culture and I just wanted to move on to something else and I know that there's a lot of other cultural photographers out there like yourself who are just you know absolutely killing it with with your craft but for me I I didn't feel my niche was there um where is it what's your you know you had a blank canvas and you pick up your camera what are you shooting man I still think I'm finding my feet with that you know I, I don't think there's like a I, I love trying new things like in every film that I do now I try at least one new camera technique give me an example uh so for India our India job we did a film for Etihad the airline um and this was a couple of months ago when I don't know if you have noticed a lot of clamp shots this is like a very big thing at the moment yeah thing no. for filmmakers so it's like attaching an object through a clamp yep. in front of your camera having the camera stationary on the other side cool. and then the the object would stay in the middle of the cool. frame yeah. so this was quite a big thing for for filmmakers i'm sure a lot of you if you are filmmakers listening will know exactly what i'm talking about uh so we tried some cool camera techniques with that we had like jord holding the boarding pass and my camera was focused on the boarding pass and he was kind of like swinging it as if he was walking through the airport. But you got the focus lock on like Etihad as the brand on the boarding pass. Same with like a phone. The phone was fixed in the middle and he was typing in like the uh, location that he wanted to go on the Etihad app. And these are like little little camera techniques that we used for that video. Um, Where do you learn these techniques? Through shooting with the guys out here, I guess. Yeah, um, I've been shooting with Mike Visuals, who's yet to come on your podcast. I'll have to drag him on come on mike yeah i'm not gonna chase you anymore. get your ass on mate get your ass on um yeah so he uses that technique a lot he's actually got like a product that he bought out with small rig like specifically for that which funnily enough and he knows this so he needs to cut me in five percent we both were shooting with like this homemade rig that he had and he was like wouldn't it be cool if we could just have a product that was exactly this but you know not all these pieces that I've mashed together from all the bits and bobs that I have at home. And that's how like his idea for the product came came together. And then he pitched it to Small Rig and, and they loved it. Nice. So um so yeah, that shooting with other creators is, and watching other creators videos on YouTube has definitely inspired me trying new things. Um the recent Hong Kong video that I haven't actually released yet, uh it's I used a match cut, which is like finding a shape, like a circle, and you find loads of different circles and you put them all one after the other very fast so okay, they kind yeah, of yeah. match in sequence um yeah just little things like that that i've never never tried before and i don't know if i'll use it ever again but i'm quite open to using new camera techniques and just elevating myself as a filmmaker yeah i think it's nice for someone to to sit across from me and say look i don't know myself well or i don't know i haven't kind of cemented my craft with any specific style or or genre or you know any kind of targeted job that i want to really go for other than you know you have an idea of who you want to work with but yeah. generally speaking like you know what am i going to make well i'm just gonna you know i'm still kind of figuring that yeah. out and i think that's really a great place to be mm. you know there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if, if anything the opposite so we still have an open mind with everything and uh, accepting everything that comes your way and being able to just like you said elevate and evolve with that yeah yeah when you when you mentioned, I thought because I was gonna I, when I asked you the question where you learn these skills, like most people say, what well, YouTube? Yeah, you know YouTube. I know you you love watching YouTube. Yeah, yeah. How how and we'll get onto YouTube in a minute, but and you, you touched on Instagram earlier. How how does kind of social media affect your world now compared to when we last spoke? Because you know I know you're the sort of guy, and nearly all of us are. You know, we we look at other people, we look across our shoulder, we look across the fence, you know, that, his grass is greener than mine. Or that's where, you know, more innocuously, innocuously, that's where I want to get to. And that's my goal. And you're kind of always looking ahead rather than looking in the present, mm -hmm. um, which is great when you're goal setting, right? And yeah. you're, you're kind of trying to evolve, which is where you are. How does Instagram, social media and phones kind of play into that? Have have you kind of been able to push that aside? Yeah, I mean, um, like I touched on it earlier, but just being able to find that posting on social media was really bad for my mental health and always thinking about what I had to post next. Um, but also like people watching and just like thinking about other people over my own goals. And I got into a bit of a habit of like always watching what the other person was doing and what jobs they're getting. And instead, 
I I just needed to you know have a bit of tunnel vision and you know focus on my own thing. And funnily enough, I was in the gym with George the other day. And I was speaking about another creator and what job he had and what he, what he was getting. And he kind of looked at me and just kind of did the blinders, uh, like the horse blinders um, uh, over my eyes, like literally like that. And just didn't say a word to me and just did that. And I was like, yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I, I know I just need to ignore the, the noise, the background noise and just focus on my own path as well. Um, why what what made him do that what were you looking at or what were you I can't remember what in particular it was it was like a another you know few filmmakers here and there who were doing this kind of work and getting jobs like you know working for car companies working for this and and that and it just I, I was talking about it too too much to the point where he was probably like Harry stop <laughs> like you Tell me about what you want to do don't tell me about what they're doing tell me about what you've done yeah, as well yeah exactly exactly like um so yeah it, it did it did make me think straight away I didn't even need to say anything after and I was like yeah I know what you mean like I know I know what my path is I know what I need to do I just need to work out how I get there and if it's a bit slower than the next person then so be it you know still your story yeah everyone has their own exactly story. exactly how do you I mean that's so much easier said than done mm. like put your blinkers on focus on your own goals your own path you know, we all try and do that, essentially. I mean, it's still good to kind of be aware of the environment and, you know, what's working for other people that may work for you if you were to apply it. Just yeah. like techniques, right? Oh, that technique might work, yeah. so I'm going to apply. But generally speaking, I couldn't agree with him more, right? It's like, it's just in practice, mm. it's extremely difficult, especially when you've got, you know, take phone. If we took phones out of our lives, what be life. much easier right what a life man <laughs> but it also it also provides like you know a great sense of inspiration mm. to some people yeah. but for you specifically you know how does insta because i know instagram used to be a big part of your life mm. maybe not so much anymore no yeah just uh i just found that all of the work i was doing was never related to my instagram i was never i, I would do very small jobs that would be like a, a social media post or something for a job uh, and I got my following to, you know, like enough where it doesn't matter if I needed more or less to get the kind of jobs that I was doing. Right. So it was fine. Like I was I was happy in that in that place. But just the constant thought of needing to post all the time and what's trending and it just set my mind into flames. And I, I just couldn't stand the thought of like the next day I needed to figure out what I needed to post that night to try and get engagement and to try and get people to, you know, comment on my on my work and and I know it's so good to put your work out there to get new fresh eyes on it um but it for me personally it was just really bad for my mental health and uh and I think that a lot of people would probably relate to me and maybe think that they're in a bad mental state because of social media and all I can say is just like take a break it doesn't matter you know nothing's going to happen if you take a break well again unless you unless you lose your business and then you go back to your home yeah. country and then have to work as a supermarket <laughs> then then don't listen to my advice There's nothing wrong with you working <laughs> yeah. we've all done it yeah we have, we have we have um yeah i think this this kind of brings what you said brings it to this fallacy and almost illusion that mm. especially in the art community and even more so with the niche of photographers and videographers they think you can't be successful mm. in air quotes or or um yeah, I guess successful in what they do or in business without a meaningful social media presence, which is absolute bullshit, right? It just, it, that is such an untruth yeah. that it's, but people don't know about that. And I, you know, I put myself in a 22 year old's position who's, you know, maybe doing photography for a year, getting to a point where, okay, I can kind of do this. Maybe I can start pitching for jobs. I got 1,000 followers on Instagram. How am I ever going to do this? Yeah. And then I end up putting 99% of my time and effort into creating for Instagram. Exactly. And then you are now you are in this coffin corner where you just you you can't get out of it because people know you for what you've put on Instagram rather than know you for who you are or you know a greater body of work. So it's it's you know it's great to hear you say that. And obviously I know that as well. I've been through it. And um, I just, I don't know what the future of this space looks like because those people who have found success without social media, 
don't really have the platforms to shout about it, if that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah. That's why it's nice to have some people like that on the podcast yeah. because they now have a voice. Yeah. Because all of our exposure is dominated by social media, mm -hmm. you only ever see the people being successful on social media. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a really difficult situation. Yeah. I don't know how creators, whatever you want to label them as, mm. get past that. I also, I hate the word creators, but I use it all the time because I yeah, never know what to. I anymore. never know what to call people. It's like, what are they? Are they artists. Yeah, artists. Exactly. But what's the difference between a? We'll come back to the yeah. the, the question I asked in a minute. But what's the difference between a content creator and a influencer, and an artist, and a photographer, and a filmmaker, and all of these labels? You know, you can be you could be all of that yeah. together. Right? Yeah, you yeah. can have, wear various different hats. Yeah. But I, I hate the term content creator yeah, as well. Same, same. Why? I think that it's just whatever the person wants to label themselves as and, and they all have different meanings, but whether that person calls themselves a content creator or a filmmaker, it doesn't make a difference. Like they're they're still probably doing the exact same work. But I think it's a, it's a, that's a really hard question to answer. I'd say like an influencer is pretty obvious. You know, they're, they are people who don't have the the best skills in the craft they're not like overly fussed about ha the the deep deep parts of filmmaking but they will create content to you know help their audience with certain things and and i don't know promote certain products etc cetera, etc cetera. they're there to influence i guess uh and a content creator the only way i see it as is someone who focuses on short form fil films and short form videos and i can't i never see a content creator who I see posting longer form films, documentaries, and them saying that they're a content creator. You know, that's, I always feel like content creation is short form. And I feel like filmmaking is long form and cinematography and videography is a lot more longer form video. And then photographer is, you know, self-explanatory. So what would you say a YouTube channel owner is with who makes 20 minute videos? I'd say it's, depending on what the video is if it's like a true cinematic it's a filmmaker if it's educational i would say you're more so that side of your business is more so of a youtuber but then you can be a you know a photographer who's a youtuber as well who has a youtube account there's so many different labels and, and whether it matters or not i don't don't think it does you know i don't think it does but i, I think that it's the, all of these labels are labels that you can give yourself without any yeah. predisposition yeah. predisposition to anything else yeah, yeah, yeah. and pre requirements or qualifications. Like anyone can just walk off the street without any experience, just come in here and go, Yeah, I'm a content yeah, creator. Exactly. That I hate. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's homogenized. Yeah, now it's yeah. democratized to uh, and there's nothing wrong with that to a to a limit. It's like you can just yeah, but you can be whatever you want to be. Well, no, you can't. You can't go and be a doctor unless you've got you know, yeah. a good brain, a loads of qualifications, <laughs> yeah, loads of education, yeah, yeah. and years of experience. Yeah. So you can put your mind to it and eventually mm. one day you get there. Yeah. So, but the, that's where content creation is frustrating for me mm. because, and even as a photographer, mm. right? Self taught photographer. Yeah, yeah. What makes me say I'm a photographer and this is a, a, a completely separate mm. conversation altogether, one that I want to address at some point. Mm. People who say they're photographers and you look at their work and go, you're not a photographer no you're not yeah. you're an influencer or yeah. you're a content creator or you're you're just not good enough yeah. to say you're a photographer. Yeah. yeah but i take photos well then everyone's a photographer yeah then, and then we've got a different a different kind of way of talking about it right but um it's a very fine line there's just like i don't think there's like one surefire answer for that um yeah you, you know but go but i feel like i don't i don't want to rustle any feathers here I just no, do, <laughs> but I just don't feel like, in, in my personal opinion, I don't feel think I don't feel like content creation is um, going to be, you know, as big as it is right now. I feel like there's only going to be a matter of time before, you know, content creators right now feel like that they've got to a point where, okay, they're it, they're getting older now, and then they have to go. Am I still going to be making the same content? as what I'm doing or how am I going to evolve this new content? You know, they might be shooting stuff in Bali, you know, going to cool places in Bali and shooting travel content. But how long does that last? But by, by the time you've done it for 10 years, does that not get to a point where you're like, what's how can I elevate this? What's my next steps? I just don't I don't feel like content creation has like a 
a path all the way to the top. I feel like it gets to a level and it's just like, where, where do you go with it after that? Yeah, you can, I don't know, start your own agency or uh, that's the only thing I, I don't know. I, I can't see the top sort of success points of it. And that doesn't mean that, you know, success is so, it, it, it's so different to every single person. But, you know, I just couldn't see myself doing content creation for the next 10, 15, 20 years. I feel like there's going to be a point in time for a lot of other people as well where they're like, okay, what's next? And then they just don't know which path to go down because they've been doing content creation for so long. A lot of the people that I have spoken to in the content creator industry aren't even that big of fans of photography and videography. You know, that's their job and that's what they do. And content creation, they've kind of fallen into it. But if someone gave them a million dollars today, they wouldn't have a camera in their hand tomorrow. Whereas that's the complete opposite of me right now. Like if someone gave me a million dollars today, for sure I've got a camera in my hand tomorrow. That's the only thing. Which I'm... camera would you have? Sony. You, even if you had a million no, dollars. No. <laughs> Sony right now until I sell yeah. it, put it on until eBay that Sony night. Ambassador. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm only saying that it just in case there's any Sony ambassadors watching. It's actually a good, really, a really good way of putting it. Actually, yeah. I haven't thought about it like that. If you've got a content creator on one hand and a photographer, filmmaker on the other, like truly passionate yeah. photographer, filmmaker on the other and each are given a million dollars, the content creator would likely give up making content. I would I would think that most of them would. Most of them yeah, would. I, I don't want to label. Assume, yeah. Whereas you would you would probably upgrade your camera and that's about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And pretty much, a few yeah. more lenses and still, because it's... Probably get a nice house somewhere in the Bahamas <laughs> and go on a holiday. Because it's vocational. It's like you, you would you love it and that's what you would do yeah. even if, if you had no money or yeah. loads of money. yeah. And the, the other thing I think, and, you know, maybe we're not addressing this the right way because maybe this is the wrong conversation to even have. Maybe it's not about does content creator creation matter? Mm. Do, do what we call content creators matter? Is Are they important for society? Are they helping us, hindering us? I think, I think what really matters in terms of distinguishing what they are, mm -hmm. what this, you know, umbrella of kind of craftsmen are is the intention behind it in terms of okay if if i'm a content creator and i just enjoy making content you know i'm i'm a i don't, know, I don't want to kind of pigeonhole loads of people here but <laughs> if i'm a stay-at-home mom and i just want to do tips on how to bring up kids yeah, right yeah because yeah. I, I enjoy that yeah and if i blow up i blow up if i don't i don't but i just enjoy making yeah. content and i'm a content creator yeah cool but if i'm a content creator and i'm giving tips on this and i'm calling myself an artist mm -hmm. and i'm kind of you know playing above my pay grade yeah, almost yeah. then i just don't think it's like anything if you have the right intent or you are honest with that intention i think then we can all get along and and uh you know respect that. yeah yeah but the difference between art and content creation is in in my mind like huge yeah. and that's my problem with it is when people go oh, i'm a content creator yeah. like as if it's something that's cool <laughs> yeah. and trendy and you should be really yeah. proud of it's yeah. like yeah if you're getting to like a million subscribers on youtube like fucking you're a content creator you're a like, content creator and a yeah. really good one yeah for sure like good for you yeah, like peter yeah, mckinnon's yeah. of this world like yeah i i'm taking absolutely nothing away from that because you're taking a skill mm -hmm. you're learning how to put that skill into something that's of effective output yeah and you're doing it yeah like good for you yeah. and and a lot of the people that i learn things from and watch online yeah. are all yeah. content creators yeah. like i'm not i, yeah. I don't want to bad mouth them because i don't feel i don't think that it's a bad thing to do uh i just can't see no, the, not at all. i just can't see the longevity in it i just can't see where the next steps you could take and hopefully there's a lot of people out there that have figured that out and they've got a game plan and they know what they want but to it's do. where content creators and influence and we're talking about the impact of society in a minute but there's where content creators and influencers think they're better than they are mm. at whatever they're doing yeah. like just fucking pipe down <laughs> a minute like you've got a following because people like who you are like yeah. you didn't create who you were yeah, yeah, you were yeah. born who you were like well done you've put that you've spun that in a way that people enjoy yeah. watching listening like that's amazing like that's a that's talent. great but that's it yeah like let's not get carried away here it's not art yeah in my in my opinion yeah. that is not art yeah. art is something that's evergreen that will last this timeless right whatever whether it's successful art or not successful art, it's there it's it's there as a piece of art yeah. whether it's a film yeah short film documentary photo series yeah. of images even nfts yeah. all this kind of stuff 
Anything with meaning, I think. Anything with meaning, yeah. purpose, and intention yeah. to be art, yeah. right? That, that, for me, is where they are vastly different. And if you fast forward 100 years, like, would I want to go back and watch a video that someone's put on YouTube about their day? No. No, <laughs> no that, that, and that's the difference. Yeah. It's the same analogy yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. the million dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, for me, makes, makes such a big difference. Hey guys, before I let you continue with the video, just indulge me for a few minutes. I want to briefly talk about my new brand, Yore. Founded with my business partner and photographic artist, Finn Matson, we're proud to bring you a new artisanal jewelry and specialty coffee brand. Yep, what on earth do they have to do with each other or anything at all? Well, they're both our passions. They've always been another artistic outlet for me, now for over a decade. So for those that know me, coffee has been my other obsession since I was young. And as a result of it, I'm a qualified SCA coffee specialist. So when I met Finn, some of you might have seen my podcast with him when we barely knew each other. Our love for art and jewelry had a home. And that home is here, House of Yore. Yore is, amongst others, an arts and jewelry label. And it's all about the art of intent for everything that we do. Our intention with Yore was to add a touch of celestial elegance and artistic expression to our visual narratives. Every jewelry piece is a statement, a reflection of your unique story and purpose. It's not just about jewelry, it's a wearable piece of art that speaks volumes. Picture this, silver or gold adorned with an actual piece of lunar meteorite. That's right, straight from our moon, making every piece as unique as the moments that we usually capture through our lenses. From limited edition lunar jewelry pieces to finely crafted 925 sterling silver and gold rings, pendants and chains, there's something for all of you in our unique designs. We're also committed to the environment as much as possible. Our coffee is direct trade, organically produced and locally farmed, minimizing impact on the environment as much as possible. Our jewelry packaging is all sustainable and recycled, other than the moon rock, of course. Proudly eco-friendly in both packaging and jewelry production, you can feel good about looking good. And to top it off, we offer free worldwide shipping, ensuring that a piece of lunar beauty can grace your collection no matter where life takes you. And if you ever find yourself here in Bali, please come and visit us. Our cafe and community-driven art house is a haven for creatives just like you. So before we head back into the video, please just take a moment to explore Yore's collection. And as a special treat for you, my wonderful audience, Yore is offering an exclusive discount. Head over to our website and use the code below for a 10% discount off your jewelry purchase. The link and details are in the description. Anyway, thanks so much for listening and I'll let you get back to the video now. So what is, you know, now we've kind of got the individual side of <laughs> content creation sorted. We've yeah. solved it. Yeah. Um, what, what is your viewpoint on... I guess the impact of social media, not just on the photography world, but mm -hmm. gen generally on people, because I know, you know, we all have differing experiences with the usage of our phones, especially Instagram. Yeah. You know, it's been linked to many mental health diseases yeah. Yeah. and uh, the f phones have, let alone in Instagram and social yeah. media platforms. And they've got a lot to answer for, in my opinion. Yeah. But they can also be seen as great tools for certainly photographers Videographers, filmmakers sure. with inspiration, reaching a new audience, yeah. sharing ideas, yeah. getting money. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, how does that affect your opinion on, you know, certainly since you've stopped kind of using it as much, mm -hmm. where do you think kind of society goes and, and is it really a bad thing that we still have the Instagrams in our lives? I mean, I was speaking to a friend about this recently and, and his view was that content creation is going to be the, you know, the biggest thing in, in the world, you know, give it five, 10 years and it's going to, it's going to surpass a lot of jobs and it, the money that's going to be involved in it is going to be crazy. Um, me personally, I just, I just can't, I, I feel like there is going to be a wall that people hit, but then, then uh, I think about the new generation coming into it. I guess it's the type of content that is out online and like you said outside of photography and and things like that like the photography filmmaking side of social media is one percent there's so much involved in social media and i think it's probably one of the most toxic places that you can ever spend your life is scrolling through through instagram 
that isn't you know isn't related to your craft or isn't you trying to learn something it's you watching tiktok dances and crap like that you know i, I just I can't fathom it. I just can't. It doesn't make sense in my mind. I look at these. Sometimes one will come up if I'm on Instagram and I'm like, how do you, I'm sorry if anyone's listening and they do this, but how do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you, how do you set up a camera and dance in front of it or, or do yeah, that yeah. kind of, that kind of, I know I've gone into a bit of a, on a separate, a separate path there, but yeah, I just, uh, I just can't, can't see it. I think that's our, f I think that's the audience's fault mm. as much as the platform. Oh, yeah. I don't think it's anything to do with the person who's yeah. dancing, right? Yeah. Because we're just fueling that. Yeah. It's like, why do, but I'll go one step further. Yeah. Why do people enjoy watching that? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I just, uh, but, but, you know, so they probably ask, why do you enjoy watching, you know, short film? Yeah, it's true. Know, or whatever. Yeah, I love watching like gear videos, just talk. Yeah. And, you know, I like watching when Get, people, not cocaine videos. Not cocaine videos. I like watching camera, camera gear. gear. Let me say the word camera first. Uh, I love watching when people like build a camera rig. It sounds so weird. I don't know why. It sounds like, a bit nerdy. Yeah, yeah. I, I love We are that. nerds. Yeah, yeah. I love that side of, of filmmaking. I think that's why I wanted to go down the production route as such. Um, because I just love all the different pieces that, that make a, a bigger picture. I, sh I guess I should touch on the fact that, you know, I, I used to do a lot of photography. And photography is where I st fast, first started getting into the industry. And I slowly delved away from it because I, I again, hit a brick wall. I hit brick walls quite often, <laughs> apparently. I just seem to like hit a brick wall and have to go in a different direction. There's so many fantastic photographers out there. And I just, I just felt like my, my, I couldn't find a presence in the photography industry. I couldn't find my own style, my own path. Uh, I was getting heavily influenced by people around me, but it never felt like it was me. It felt, always right. felt like I was copying someone. Um, I struggled to come up with new photographic ideas. And then that's when my sort of eye led to video and film. And uh, I just loved all the elements that came together. It allowed me to be way more creative. And yeah, I guess like for you, when you go out and, and, and you know, photograph a, a local person, you're never going to get that same experience. No one's ever going to be able to copy that same experience. You know, that person is going to be gone you're probably never going to see that person again no one's going to be able to find that particular person that you photographed to go back to them with the same lights that you had in the same conditions that you had and take that photo but i was doing a lot of landscape photography and that kind of yeah in in that sort of field where someone could just come behind me and take the same photo as me and i felt like i you know i was literally just one one step behind the the person in front who was doing the exact same thing and with film, I feel like no one could ever recreate what I did, you know? When we say film, not film photography, but Sorry, movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, yeah. Movies. So like filmmaking. filmmaking. Um, yeah, no one could ever recreate what I was doing. You yeah. know, there's no way someone can get the exact same right. shot and put it together in this exact same style. And that's why I really felt like that was my path and that's where I wanted to go. Yeah. Nice. O on that note of photography, I went to China last year mm. And, um, you know, as you, as you know, China and landscape photography is like massive, right? Amazing. The droves yeah. come in yeah. and yeah, beautiful, obviously, but the beauty attracts just fucking shitloads of people. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wasn't there for landscape, but I went to some beautiful places mm. and, uh, I won't give away the location cause I don't need any more people, but, um, I went to this one spot, which just looked over these beautiful, um, mountains. Mm -hmm. And I turned up at sunrise. I took my camera, obviously. Like, I don't do landscape photography. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. I don't share it. But, you know, I have some in my portfolio. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll just I'll get some shots. If, if it's nice, I'll get some shots. If not, I'll just enjoy the moment. Couldn't enjoy the fucking moment. Yeah. Just because <laughs> there were li literally, yeah. I would say about 100 people yeah. all lined up, just getting the same shot. Like, same you know. Way frothing over yeah. the gear and the yeah. lenses and the tripods i was about to say they all had tripods didn't they <laughs> God, like i mean okay if that's what you enjoy that's yeah. what you enjoy but don't come at me saying that's art yeah yeah well maybe it's not one of a kind that's yeah. for sure it's yeah. not unique original so you know there's plenty of that in photography so i, I definitely see that attraction with filmmaking it's just more three-dimensional yeah it? exactly you've got so many more moving parts yeah that it's 
it's impossible to recreate yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then like you can take always take it one step further with in that in that space where you've got, you know, someone with a camera and then you could have two cameramen on set and then you could have someone who's there for audio and you mm. could have someone there for lighting. Then you've got the talent that's involved, the locations. There's so many different components that it can it can eventually get to, which is one of the reasons that I, I've always thought my end goal is working for a production company and I'm but in nowhere near in nowhere near close to having that as my as my dream but I thought I needed to I actually thought why why am I dreaming to work underneath someone when I've worked for myself for so long yeah so I little plug <laughs> Do it. so yeah I started my uh like my own production company in a way um started going under a, as a production team with a couple of other guys and um and yeah with that's that's going to be my sole focus is working as a production unit having people involved and being able to get my friends in on jobs as well because I love working with my friends like that has been one of the best things about being in this industry is getting to do jobs and like bounce ideas off each other and and come up with this end product that I'm so proud of. Um, so yeah, that was the the next step, step for me and imposter syndrome then sunk in and I was like, am I ready for this? Like what? I've, I've not been in this industry for too long. Can I even say like, are people going to look at me when I say, you know, I'm setting up a production company. Are they going to look at me funny? Are they going to think, well, you're nowhere near ready for that, but I just got to do it. And you know, fuck the haters. <laughs> fuck the haters. <laughs> Speaking of hate, let's talk about influences again. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're always, we're always going back to that. <laughs> well, we started there and then somehow we digressed into um, filmmaking and, mm. um, and, and photography. But, yeah. Um, we'll get back there for sure. We just want to kind of wrap up this, this the way we are all kind of utilizing social media yeah. and the way it's kind of affecting all of us, whether it's in a professional or personal sense, but definitely in the professional and the artistic sense, how we then create, how we then inspire. Mm -hmm. And I see so many people and, um, you know, I've had a few on the podcast who've been wonderful guests, mm. but what they do is so the way they do it and the intent behind it is so different yeah. to maybe me or someone else who doesn't have social media as a priority. Mm -hmm. These people, some of these people out there, the photographers and videographers, content creators, they live every day by their social media presence. Yeah. They will introduce me to people by saying how many followers they've got, yeah. right? Or their, it's like or their, their Instagram status. name. Like, like their, what the yeah. fuck are we doing yeah, here? Yeah, 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 you yeah. know that's not real, yeah, right? Yeah. You know that's a virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. there might be real people at the end yeah. of the phones, but they're not like, get people in a room, yeah. get eyes on you. Yeah. You know, it's it's just a really interesting way that the, the landscape is is shifting. And I don't see any respite in that. I kind of agree with you in terms of content creation. I don't see that as a, a as a as something that's going to be around forever. Mainly because um, I'll get into a question in a minute. Mainly because I see more and more people coming on the scene. So mm -hmm. the, the market generally content creation is get it is yeah. is saturated it's already, now. It's yeah. like over oversaturated, yeah. which means prices come with that, right? So you end up now getting loads of new people coming into the market and just doing shit for free, yeah. right? So where do we, where, where do we, you mean the way I see it is it's going to implode Yeah. and brands are going to be, get so used to like just getting yeah. shit for free. Yeah. And obviously content creators can't live for free. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happens, that's right? It. There's that brick wall. It's like an endless cycle. Yeah. It's like what exactly that's, that's the part of where I didn't think there was any longevity in it because I, I feel like, like you said, everyone is doing more stuff for free, doing collabs because they want to go on a nice hotel, go to a nice hotel, go on a nice holiday. But then, yeah, companies are just going to expect that. And uh, going back to what my partner does, she has managed me for the last five years. She also has done some work managing other people as well. And uh, this year in particular has been the hardest part of her her career because she's struggling to get through to anyone that you know you need to pay for what what the services that we're doing but they are just like no we've changed things around now you know content creation is is basically something that we're only doing collabs for and it's actually crazy to see that the people that you know i've worked with for the last few years are now completely restructuring their whole you know content creation campaigns to only 
collabs and only free pay like free projects so good or bad it's terrible yeah absolutely terrible because it it does affect me because i don't you know the things that i do also are in that kind of industry although i don't again label myself as a content creator sometimes i have to do those kind of jobs because the money might be really good but at the same time now it's not good because they're just you know there's so many people out there who will also not challenge a company who will like yeah. I, I don't know they'll they'll come in and say no sorry we only, we only do collabs the first reply that you know we ever send is i'm sorry like these are our rates or you know the production that we're going to be able to do it comes at a cost we can't do it for free we have to pay the bills we literally put that in emails you know we can, we have to pay our bills this is how much it's going to cost you and then they just say okay well you know we can't we can't do it because they would only do it for a collab and it's getting to the point now where it is scary and that's you know one of the reasons why i can't see myself being in that social media game for you know any longer and just focusing on creating assets for companies to be able to use for marketing and and things like that instead of you know promoting the company through my social media because there's i just feel like there has been a rapid decline in the amount of companies that want to pay for for good quality stuff so i also double down on that mm. and say that and this is a conversation i had with a, a few of our mutual friends who mm. disagree with me and I'm, I'm okay with that i think we'll probably agree to disagree forever but well, until we see what happens mm. with content creation and social media yeah. in general, it's definitely not going away. Let's put it like yeah. that. Until the algorithms change to favor, you know, artistic integrity, yeah. we're going down one path where we're all becoming more stupid yeah. by the day yeah. because we're not getting any kind of integrity with what we see, whether that's uh, whether we're artists following artist yeah. artists or we're normal people following TikTok dances, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Short form content, generally speaking, is not truly educational content. You can only you can only communicate so much yeah. in sixty seconds or yeah. less. Yeah, exactly. Right? You can't have a conversation with these people yeah. to converse, to have discourse, to argue, to disagree, to do this. Yeah. So that's out the window. Yeah. And you don't have the long form option, which is where I think YouTube is really winning mm. because. You can kind of do everything. It's not predicated so much on the amount of followers or amount of likes yeah. that you get. So you're not, you obviously, you do care about that. Yeah. I, you know, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah, yeah. But Anyone you, it's not like I need to go and make this YouTube video because this is what the algorithm is saying yeah. I should make. And this, I need to get another yeah. few thousand subscribers yeah. by this, you know, and that's my goal. That's yeah. my goal because I'm going to get business from it. Yeah. Like all of that does matter, but it's very different. Yeah. I just, I just, I, I wrangle with not being able to have proper conversations with people. And that's the whole reason I started this podcast. So I, I saw the way, and podcasting has obviously blew up, surprisingly for me in the last five five years especially. Podcasting is now huge. Almost everyone's a podcaster, yeah, right? It's yeah, like content yeah. creators. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what, you're not a podcaster? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> oh, God. yeah, I'm a podcaster, totally. <laughs> uh, you know, the, but there's uh, really surprised me because that's conversation mm. and i thought so maybe i am wrong but i thought people don't really do that anymore they'd rather be stuck on their phones for a start and even when they're on the phones they're just fucking gorging yeah. on this yeah and then they're, they're watching something that probably means nothing granted there yeah. are some amazing tips and tricks for yeah, yeah. any industry but generally speaking you're watching shit yeah. and it's ruining your brain yeah Exactly. You know, you could be reading a book, but yeah. all you're doing is scrolling yeah. on Instagram. And for many people, 10 hours a day. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think the average, and this is probably old data now, but the average in the, I'm still doing this. It's probably gone up though. So if, if you're I saying, mean, it was six hours a day on social media, the, the average across um, mid 20 year olds. I think they took a sample between 20 and 20 and 30 year olds across the US last year. crazy. It's insane. Yeah, it is crazy. Um, You know, obviously there are nuances to that, but, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time on my phone. Mm. But um, 10 minutes of that is Instagram. Yeah. yeah. And uh, a lot of it's WhatsApp and a lot of it's email. So, you know, I'm by no means perfect. Yeah. My wife always tells me to get off my phone, yeah. especially before bed. Yeah. Yeah. Same, but I just, same, same. I'm so conscious of, um, I'm so conscious of not getting dragged down with that. And as photographers and as f filmmakers, videographers, less so because it's a native medium. It's yeah. like, well, you're posting a video. Or I make videos anyway. Mm -hmm. Photographers, yeah. it's like, well, I'm, I've am i got to get sucked into this. And yeah. it comes back to, no, you don't have to. 
yes, it's great if you if the intended use is business yeah. or an audience to sell something to, right? But you don't have to to get sucked into that no, you if if you don't want to. But photographers, it's difficult because we're still image people. Yeah, yeah. And there is no still image app out yeah, there really yeah, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is anyway. a conversation that I've had with George for a long, long time. Like he, he has felt the, the George Hammond. Yes, yeah, he has felt the pressure of reels and short form content for a long, long time, and he just went, you know, I'm, I'm not going to fall into that trap. There might be like a clip that he got whilst he was shooting that he's really happy with, and he's going to post as a reel. And for his business, he's going to post a lot more educational stuff because he, his business is you know, based around education, but you never fell into that trap of like, I need to post because it's the trend now as reels, you know, like reels are becoming a thing. I need more engagement. So I'm just not going to post photos anymore. I'm only going to post reels. I feel like a lot of photographers went into that. Yeah, me of. included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still do. Yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't, I don't do so much tips. I think I do a tips and tricks maybe once every two weeks. Yeah. Which is really not enough. The rest of my reels are podcast clips. But right? then I think that's a bit different because I feel like that's your brand. And it, it, you're, you've got so many pieces to your brand that, you know, I don't feel like content creation is the worst thing if you're, if you've got other parts of your business and that's just one of the pieces. Short form content, you might be doing educational stuff. It might be small cinematic things but that's not the entirety of your business. There are other parts to it. You might be a YouTuber, right? But then you need to do short form content to be able to drag people into your longer form things. Again, it's the intention behind yeah. what, what you're doing it for. Yeah, I think like sole content creators who are just focusing on one thing, I, I just, going back to what we said, I, I just can't see it going anywhere. Yeah, find something else. Yeah. Go to away. Add, to add, yeah. Leave go. Bali. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's now got to a point where I'm, I'm going to move on in a minute, but it's now got to a point where take Bali, for example, because we know it really well. People come here to do an intense week of just influencer photo spots. Yeah. That for me is ruining and not just the photography industry, but yeah. just society yeah, yeah 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 like why are you not coming here to meet the people and learn about a different culture and yeah. meet new people and make friends and experience the cuisine and yeah. the beaches and the landscapes without getting a fucking selfie yeah, 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 or doing yeah. the usual pose looking up yeah. beneath the waterfall yeah i yeah. got i it's just not helping anyone other yeah. than themselves and you can see that with with people like you who are trying to get work in this industry all of us mm. are and we go right there are rates yeah like what yeah yeah and you get you either get nothing you get yeah. tumbleweed yeah or you get people coming back now it's way too expensive yeah. so yeah. we have i've been charging this like yeah you know so it's just it's just diluting everything it also like, goes back to what you were saying about what we're actually consuming online because people are consuming iphone videos and you know travel tips and things like that whereas i don't feel like they're consuming at the moment longer form content films but then that's if a brand sees that they're only going to hire people who are doing iPhone videos and, you know, very, very short, easy videos to do. But then that opens the market to everyone with a bloody iPhone who can come here and go to Nung Nung Waterfall and film themselves and film the waterfall and maybe put a product there and then, you know, get the free product or even get paid. You know, it's like it feels like everyone it is anyone with an iPhone can do it. And then that goes back to your point of anyone can call themselves a content creator. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have a problem with it if people used that. If the majority of creators, mm. content creators, influence, whatever we want to call them, yeah. if the majority of those people used it for good, altruistic yeah. means, yeah. right? Maybe they're helping a charity. And, yeah. But that's not how our human race works. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, people want something for themselves, obviously. And I get that. We've yeah. all got to pay our rent. Um, but when it becomes this kind of thing to be cool and to be an influencer and to undercut everyone else yeah. that's that's trying to work so hard to do it yeah. well and do it properly and, yeah. and forge long-term relationships with clients and yeah. brands. It's just, it's, I don't, I just, I just don't believe in it. Yeah. And I think it, you know, I, I've been in this game for about the last five years and to see a lot of people with uh, a lot less experience coming into it and and getting the kind of work they're getting it is hard you know and i think a lot of people might say no i don't care you know but they they definitely do care it's very hard to watch 
people yep. coming into this industry who haven't been doing it as long and having uh, you know as much success as they've been having um it definitely does hurt when you've when you've put a lot of time into your craft you know i've i've spent i can't even count the hours of how much of learning that it took me to nail what i've done and then to hear like a company wouldn't pay me for all of the 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 time that we've spent do, like the time that I've spent learning this stuff over someone who you know bought the new iPhone 15 Pro and can can make some cool content. Uh, I, yeah, it's it's baffling. Um, I think we have a responsibility. Like, take, yeah, George's a great example. Now, you mentioned him and his his Instagram page, and I, I talked about this with him in person. But he, there's there's two sides to this that I think he's done really well and maybe not so well. Uh, no, no, actually, no. There's, there's two. There's one side where I think he's done really well. I resist mm -hmm. reels. Yeah. Because if, but I think he was in an easier position to do so because yeah. it already made such a huge base when yeah. Instagram was much more conducive to yeah. photos. I'm not saying that's why he did not the sole reason why he's obviously yeah. a, an amazing artist. Yeah. But he was posting. He set his Instagram up when he was, um, when Instagram was, you know, there were no reels. Yeah. So that helped. I'm not saying that was the cause causal factor, but when reels came along, and and I've you know spoken about this with him as well, and he he's just kind of said, well, no, I you know I'm, mm. I'm a photographer, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm not going to do it. What he's doing there is sending a signal to his students, mm -hmm. to the younger generation, to newbies coming in the space, like don't you don't have to do reels. Yeah. It's different for him though because yeah. he's you know got a million followers or whatever yeah, he has yeah, yeah. so he doesn't feel like he has to maybe mm -hmm. he feels like oh, i want to kind of make sure i'm still present yeah. still getting engagement yeah. and still having an audience not losing them yeah but i think sending a signal like that is really important and on the other side i i speak with friends who who for me set the bat, set the wrong example mm -hmm. by focusing on social media as their priority photography or whatever the, the craft comes second right it's like okay what am i going to post today how am i going to engage yeah. i spend another hour on my instagram and then do this and then do this and then post this and then i'm going to go and get that photo and make it look like something i know works so i'm yeah. going to make a video a video idea that i know works yeah. and then i'm going to replicate it and put it on mine yeah and hope for me that's just just wrong in every way yeah right yeah. you're you're if if you have an influence, if you've got hundred thousand followers and more, and mm -hmm. you're doing that, you you should, in my opinion, have a responsibility to educate yeah. people who, you know, trying to get where you are, right? So I, I don't know. I think there's, it's obviously there's many complexities, but I do feel we have to we have to set the right example, and you're doing it, unfortunately now now that you're not posting that you don't you don't necessarily have that voice do you know what i mean like how do you speak to your audience yeah you, know, you have to craft an audience off social media but to get that audience yeah. you probably have to be active on social media yeah. so it's kind of a catch-22 position i guess like my audience has uh, you know always been there if i still post something now i will still get the same people always, really? always commenting cool. which is That's really great. nice to see um, but at the same time, I'm I'm not selling any digital products, so I feel like my audience, apart from seeing cool cool things, they're not. It's not not that they're not important to me, but like I don't need to flood them with with content all the time for them to see because it, again, it like it's I can't say because they're not important to me because I'm so grateful for every single person that's ever followed my work. You know, it's Thanks. it's. It's uh, it's it means you know for every creator it means a freaking lot when you have these people who will, who will watch you. But you know I just don't feel like I'm giving them any value by uh by showing them my stuff all the time because all I would be doing is repeating the same clips over and over again that for them to see in a different format with a trending reel over a trending audio over the top. And I just don't feel like that. All I'm doing is giving them more stuff to watch to sit there and scroll through all the time although it's like my work and i would hope that they would like it i don't it, it's not meaningful there's no story behind it it might be some old clips that i've put together and i'm not saying i haven't done this because i've definitely done it you know when reels were booming what like two years ago when they first really started picking up i was recycling old videos and finding the trending audio and i was basically fueling everyone's need to sit there and scroll 
Whereas I just don't feel like it's it's wise or smart to do that with using the same things. If there's something really important that I want someone to watch or, you know, it's a new piece of work, I'll post it on Instagram. You know, if it's some clips I'm really proud of and I've put them together with some nice audio, I'll post it on Instagram. But I don't feel like I need to then post the same thing the next day in a different order with a new audio over the top of it because I'm just fueling that that endless cycle for people and it's really bad for their brain and it's it, and for yours yeah for me as well and that's why I decided to to take the break you know and it's I wouldn't say it's like a, a break because it's it's probably been about the last year now of really you know inconsistent posting but I'm happy you know I just if you're happy you do it yeah yeah, yeah. If it's uh well that's the counter argument mm. isn't it but my, you know, people will say, well, you know, I want to do it and yeah. I enjoy doing it. Well, well, great. Yeah. But you might enjoy running dogs over yeah. with your bike. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that it's, it's right. It's a good thing to do. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, maybe take another thought. Yeah, for sure. I think we've kind of solved social media yeah. and the world's problems. Yeah. Um, what does the next year look like for you? What does 2024 kind of have in store for Harry Pope? Um, I feel like... The next year is really solidifying who I am in this space. Like I've always, like I was speaking about earlier, I've always felt imposter syndrome. I, I didn't, I don't feel like I've been doing it for that long where I can have a name, a big enough name. But at the same time, I'm really confident in what I can do. I, I'm confident to say that I, I'm not the best and I know I can, I can improve so much in so, di so many different aspects, but I'm like, I'm ready to learn. And the next year is just going to be, progressing every stage of my filmmaking, never thinking I'm the best, never thinking that I'm on top, but always knowing that I am good at what I do and just trying to elevate it every step of the way until next year. Hopefully I can, you know, kind of think about the clients that I really want to work with and the, the bigger brands in, in the world. And, and, uh, and needless to say, like I'm working with some amazing clients at the moment and, you know, the goals are already getting ticked off in March of this year. So, you know, I, I'm really grateful for that, but I've I've got the, the biggest goals where that people would ask me and I would say, and they'd think I'm ridiculous. They'd think I'm stupid and that that's unachievable, but you know, I'm never going to achieve it if I don't think it's going to happen. So this year is really just focusing on the craft, learning, taking in every little bit of, you know, um, tips and advice from other people, networking and just making myself the best filmmaker in the fucking world <laughs> that's how i'll put it yeah nice mate yeah. um well I, I wish you the best of luck Thanks. and obviously i'll be monitoring your progress from just the other side of the street exactly but um we're going to end with a couple of questions mm -hmm. the one is from our previous guests luke and mike oh uh, no yeah don't want it uh, okay no, I'm, joking, I'm, I'm joking i'm joking Give um, it. it's pretty easy yeah but i think it actually is suitable for you because it kind of brings you into the present moment and to see you know what you think about um, your previous accomplishments and the question is what is the greatest accomplishment of your life the greatest accomplishment is this if so of my life and i'm not specific to photography no no no, no. yeah just okay. anything personal, personal um i'd say the greatest accomplishment of my life was leaving the uk and pursuing something that i was passionate about instead of working the same job that I was doing, I was in the fitness industry in the UK and I was very bored and I pretty much hated my job. Um, so yeah, and, and I've, I've only got my, my current girlfriend to, to thank for that because she got me out of that bubble and, and told me that she was going traveling and I ended up following her and the rest is history. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah, leaving the UK has definitely been my biggest accomplishment because it, it's hard, you know, you could, for most people now, if I told my friends, you know, go and move to the other side of the world, go and live a little bit who are still in the UK, they think I'm crazy and that they'd never be able to do it, you know? Um, and it was hard and we had no money at the time. And, you know, we were living day by day with the money we were earning from that day. But, um, yeah, getting through all of that and getting to the place where I'm in now, which is, you know, happy doing what I'm doing, earning good money and living a happy, healthy life, I'd say is my I biggest accomplishment. That's awesome. Yeah, I think people who haven't done it don't quite realize how big of a deal mm. moving country is. You're literally like leaving a life yeah. behind, yeah. going to start a brand new one mm -hmm. from scratch. Yeah. yeah, Like you might have a few hundred bucks in your yeah, pocket yeah, yeah. and your mental health physical, great. But 
Uh, yeah. You, like it is a big yeah, yeah. deal. And the older you get, I've yeah. done it twice now. I was like, yeah. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, and it takes so long to then so build long. your life. Mm -hmm. Like it takes a couple of years yeah. to really find. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I talk to people back in the UK who've never done it mm. and the, you know, oh, I must, and they just, they just, I don't know. Can't they fathom have a, it. They can't fathom it. And they have a diff completely different perspective on yeah. life because of it. Right. And that's one beauty. And that's what I love that you said is yeah. an accomplishment because yeah. it, it really, really is. Yeah. This is the, the third country we've lived in in the last seven years since leaving the UK. Wow. So, you know, having to, like you said, like it, you can leave the UK and then you can go, I don't know, uh, and move to another country after that and then move to one more after that. But you're starting from scratch. You know, every country you move to, it does, it's not like you're already one up and it's only a little bit more to move to the next country. You're literally starting from scratch every single time you move. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, going back to the accomplishment, yeah, just being able to comfortably be on the other side of the world and have set up what we've set up and be happy is is it, yeah. Nice, mate. Final question, mm -hmm. conversation card, lucky dip. So pick card, face down, hand it to me. This is new. Well, yeah, I guess it is since you last came Yeah, on. yeah, yeah. Okay, very good question. All right, this was asked. Um, actually, no, we haven't had this on the, on the show before, but um, take as long as you need. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what pain do you enjoy having? Pain? Don't say Jadina. Yeah, I know. She beats me every night now. <laughs> um, the pain I enjoy having is, I would say, and I have to relate this back to my industry and my career. And the pain that I have is knowing what my next steps are <laughs> and knowing that I'm not there yet, you know? Yeah. That's the only way I can describe it. Like if I could jump, I'd never want to say if I could jump 10 years because people would be like, why do you want to skip your life? You know, live your life to the fullest. But if I could, if I could jump a year ahead and make sure that I'm in that position that I want to be in, then I would, I would do it. But, I know I can't do that. So I need to just stay, stay focused. And even though it, it pains me that I can't, it pains me that I haven't started what I wanted to do five years before, you know, it pains me that coming out of school, I didn't want to go into film or the film industry. I would have gone to film school if I knew this was what I wanted to do coming out of school. And this, all, all these thoughts always give me, you know, massive anxiety. And that's the pain that I live with, but I'm also, happy that i've taken this path because i'm happy that i'm here you know i could have stayed in the uk and never met jed and you know be working a, a nine to five and that's not you know that's not for everyone or it is for some people but it's definitely not for me um so yeah i think that's the only way i can, <laughs> can answer that i might not even answer that question properly but yeah i, no, uh, I get it yeah I mean, the desire is the the cause of all yeah the suffering yeah right because yeah. whether you're whatever end of the scale you're at, whether you are suffering and because you desire food yeah. or you're suffering because you're a billionaire and mm -hmm. you desire the next billion. Yeah. There's always something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, again, easier said than, than done. done. But mate, I picked up a camera when I was 35. Yeah. I, you yeah. know, I, I, I struggle with that as well, yeah, but yeah, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, what am I going to do? It. Reverse yeah. time? Exactly. Exactly. It um, might, might annoy you and you might feel that you wished you did have a camera earlier in your, in your career, but, it's your story, you know? Yeah. It's totally um, going to play other things. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. Um, I'm happy. I'm healthy. That's all I care about. I hope you can try and, uh, like, try and see that at some mm -hmm. point. Like, um, yeah. you know, I, I, and it's so easy. So I just, you know, I want to be where I want to be in five, yeah. ten years time. Yeah. But, you know, that will go quickly and you yeah. look back and go, fuck, why didn't I enjoy that? Yeah. That time when I had yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, with that, let's end. Easy. Thank Thanks you very so much, much, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate dealing with more technical issues today. Always good. Um, That's Bali. Until next time, until I guess. Next time, third yeah. time lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Cheers, be here mate. for it. Thank you.